The method of drying by piling and leveling has been utilized for thousands of years, ever since man first began drying his crops in the sun. He found he could dry his crops faster and improve their quality if he piled and spread them a few times. Today, the same principle holds true. But now, the piling and leveling is accomplished mechanically under highly controlled conditions. Here, for example, is a Wismont turbo dryer. The product is carried on trays around a number of fan wheels. These wheels, of the turbine type, give the turbo dryer its name. Stationary wipers transfer the product from tray to tray as the trays pass under them. The piles thus formed are leveled to a layer of controlled thickness as they pass under the stationary levelers. The turbo fans circulate the air over the product on the trays, just as a fan circulates the air in a room. The movement of the air increases the heat transfer thus speeding up the drying or cooling. The rate at which the air circulates within the dryer is many times that of the airflow through the dryer. Because of the vertical construction, a very small negative pressure can be maintained inside the dryer, thus preventing dust from escaping through the housing into surrounding space. Hot air is delivered to the dryer through inlets with adjustable dampers at several levels for exact temperature control. Another advantage of the turbo dryer's vertical construction is that the bottom section of the dryer can be used as a cooler since cold air is heavier than warm air. If the exhaust contains fines, a dust collector is installed. When drying involves the removal and recovery of a solvent, the turbo dryer is used in a closed circuit system. This consists of, in addition to the turbo dryer, a condenser with liquid receiver, followed by a mist eliminator, a recirculation fan, and a heater to preheat the recirculating medium before it re-enters the dryer. To reduce the flow rate of the drying medium, internal heaters are sometimes used. A ceiling type feeder and discharge airlock complete the closed circuit operating scheme. Since the pressure inside the dryer is only slightly lower than atmospheric, expensive seals are not needed and no fumes escape into the surrounding area. A closed circuit operation is also used for purifying a product by continuous entrainer sublimation. In this case, the circuit consists of the dryer, now called a sublimer, a filter, an air-cooled condenser, and a recirculation fan. As before, the recirculating medium is preheated before it re-enters the sublimer and is continually heated inside by internal heaters. The impurities are collected in a container from which they are periodically removed. Continuous turbo-sublimer installations, which have replaced old-fashioned batch sublimers, have greatly reduced operating costs and obnoxious conditions. At one time, drying was pretty much a matter of trial and error, but today the guesswork is completely eliminated. In the Wismont laboratories, exhaustive tests of the products are translated into a turbo dryer design which will accomplish the required results. The Moisture Test Laboratory holds a variety of instruments and apparatus for moisture determination on samples taken during the drying tests. If the moisture test method is weight loss, the residual moisture is removed in an automatic moisture balance, an oven, a furnace, or under vacuum, according to the heat sensitivity of the product. If the sample decomposes, the moisture is determined by titration with Fischer reagent or by chemical analysis. The heart of the laboratory is the Wismont drying test apparatus. This test dryer is unique in that it duplicates the actual operating conditions of the commercial size unit.
Samples may be withdrawn at any stage of the drying without interrupting the test. During drying tests, the temperatures of the air and of the product are simultaneously recorded. The ability to handle a particular material determines the suitability of the dryer. The turbo dryer can be used for a remarkably wide range of products, from pastes and slurries to extremely fine powder. Preformed pellets are handled gently so that they dry with a minimum of breakage or fine. The same is true of fragile crystals. Some form of preparation may be required to feed the material to the dryer in order to obtain a more desirable product. Certain materials must be extruded, others granulated or flaked, and still others must be reduced in size by crushing or shredding. An unlimited number of drying conditions are obtainable in this test dryer. The four primary drying parameters can be varied to establish the optimum drying conditions. The temperature and velocity of the drying medium, as well as the layer depth and transfer rate, are easily adjustable over a wide range. The drying medium can be either air, conditioned air, inert gas, or superheated solvent vapor. All results are tabulated and graphs of drying curves are prepared for use by the engineering department. No two projects are alike. Every drying problem presents a challenge to the engineer's resourcefulness. Training, knowledge, and imagination are all equally necessary in working out the right answer. Drying materials efficiently and economically is one of the basic requirements of industry. Research and engineering have made possible new applications of the turbo dryer's usefulness. The Wismont Company is proud of its achievements in this field.